Hey there, everybody. Welcome to my latest broadcast. I'm Todd Knock. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, see people coming in now, so thank you. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so yeah, I'm drawing a Harley Quinn today, and um, it's the Suicide Suicide Squad, easy enough for me to say, uh, Suicide Squad version of Harley Quinn. So I started out with the roughs already, uh, and the roughs kind of got away with me and went to almost finished pencils. So we're going to focus mostly on the inks on this one here. Uh, oops, sorry about that. And hopes of maybe taking this to watercolor if there's time. So uh, greetings to everyone. Thanks for all the, the highs, hellos, and welcomes. So glad y'all are here. Uh, so, uh, thank you so- oh, you dig my hair, thank you, thank you, I'm getting some good lift here today. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, let's plug into the rig and, uh, get to inking and, uh, hopefully, if there's time, some painting. I got my watercolor paints there, I was watching, uh, Doctor Who, uh, re-watching season one of the current series while I was getting ready. So here's Harley, and, uh, We will um, we'll move into some inks here. How's the good doctor? He's fantastic. Especially the ninth doctor. How long did this take? This took me about uh, 45 minutes to kind of rough this in here. Uh, trying to find the pose that I wanted and getting the details right. In fact, uh, because I have not drawn um, this version of Harley Quinn frequently, I need to pull up... Um, which Doctor do I like? I like the 10th the best. I need to pull up some uh, reference and make sure I have the movie reference of her outfit so I can uh, get as many of the details uh, correct as possible. So, um... I appreciate everyone hanging out, and uh, I'll do my best to answer questions as best I can, as always. Uh... I will try to answer questions that I'm able to. Um, a lot of my focus goes on the art, so sometimes it's hard to see uh, everyone's questions. So um, I will try to answer if I can, I, but I just can't promise I can answer everyone's question. Uh, but I'll do my best to answer as many as I am capable of during the broadcast. So, so glad everyone's here. Thanks for all the hearts, gang. I really appreciate that. Appreciate all the likes. And thanks for inviting people to the broadcast and uh, via Twitter and Facebook. So I really appreciate that. All right. You never watched Doctor Who? Where should you begin? Uh, you can watch series. Uh, the current series is on uh, Amazon Prime, so you can start with season one and uh, watch up through season eight. Season nine should be on Prime. I hear uh, later this summer to early fall. So, um, um, I'm sorry. What's that, Doc? Um. Sorry, that was my wife. She was uh, weighing in on where to start uh, watching Doctor Who. All right, so let's let's crack into some inks here. Using a pigment micron marker, uh, a zero one right now to maintain some thin details on her hair here initially. I'll let Dawn know that y'all pass on the greeting. She's uh, she stepped out of the studio. Suicide Squad Harley, that is correct. Yes. Suicide Squad Harley is happening. The Margot Robbie Suicide Squad Harley. What I like about the Margot Robbie version is she's got really fun hair and makeup so um so i think that'll be a fun challenge to get all the 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 tendrils of her hair and everything and on her uh pigtails as well so i'm switching between the 08 and the 01 uh depending on the amount of uh thickness i need to my line weights Was there ever a challenge for drawing uh, female anatomy? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. When I was a teenager, uh, drawing women were very, or, or 
women, girls, females was always very difficult. Uh, so I took a lot of practice. Uh, probably my life drawing classes at the Art Institute uh, helped me um, in just overcoming some of those challenges and and my fashion illustration classes were probably some of my favorite classes at the art institute because we got to draw people in um in fashion in fashion illustration again easy for me to say uh figure work is very exaggerated all the figures are lengthened where we usually draw people at, at, at a, a height of seven heads uh, a head is pretty much the unit of measurement we use in our in our art in, in fashion illustration, people are like 10 to 11 heads tall. So it was very exaggerated. It was the closest thing to comic books I got to do while in, um, while in art school, where I studied commercial art and graphic design. I appreciate all the comments. There's so many, it's hard to keep up with them. But uh, do I like Will Smith Deadshot? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I hope to. I hope to. We'll see when the movie comes out, and I'll be doing some tightening up of pencil, the pencils here, making sure everything's in the right place, like her hairline here. I went to the Art Institute of Dallas. That's where I went to school back in the 1990s. Have I ever created original characters of my own? Yes, I have. It's, they're called Wild Guard. You can find the first trade paperback fairly easily on, on uh, I think, Amazon and eBay. Oh, you picked up French curbs. Excellent. Hope those help you in your drafting aspects of your illustrations. Was I able to draw before I went to art school? Yes. Yes, I was. I've, I've drawn all my life. I've always had a passion for drawing. I've spent pretty much my whole life, whole life drawing. And I love it. What I use French curves for? Uh, when I need to draw a smooth curved line, um, for like, like uh, I often use them for when I'm drawing cars or like Wolverine's claws. If there's like a curve to his claw, instead of freehanding it, I like to use a French curve. Here's my, here's one of my French curves. So I can use this curve and I can just go zoomp and it gives me a nice clean curved line. What did art school teach me? Uh, I studied commercial art and graphic design. So it taught me like how to design logos and uh, ad campaigns, but I didn't go to school to learn that. I went to school to uh, make my art skills more professional in hopes of uh, progressing my art skills further uh, more quickly uh, so I could break into comic books uh, more, break in sooner. So um, I was actually able to break into the business full time um, one year after I graduated. So, uh, so it, it worked out. It all paid off. Paid off my school loans. And it's all good. What character do I enjoy to draw? Uh, I, that would be mostly X-Men characters are probably some of my favorites. But I also love characters from the Justice League, Spider-Man, Avengers. But the first comic book I read regularly as a kid was X-Men. So those will always have a, a very very dear place in my heart. What was the hardest part of anatomy for me to learn? Uh, you know, really, anatomy in itself, is, just in general, is, is a challenge. Um, so I don't know if, if there was one thing that was particularly hard. It was just a, a challenge. And, uh, you know, it can still be a challenge depending on the pose I need to draw. So I'm always referencing from, from life whenever possible to, um, to try to get my, my, um, anatomy as believable as possible while still exaggerating it like I like to for, uh, for comics.
Do I have any original comic book characters? I think I had mentioned, answered that question uh, just a few moments ago, but I'll, I'm more than happy to answer it again. Yes, it's called Wild Guard. W-I-L-D-G-U-A-R-D. There's actually, I actually have a, a uh, Wild Guard Facebook fan page. You can learn more about Wild Guard there. Don't have a lot of stuff on Wild Guard there on the Facebook fan page, but it's, it'll kind of give you a start. Um, I'm hoping to go full color, yes, and if, I, if there is time to go full color, this will be a watercolor illustration. This one was drawn on watercolor paper in hopes of going full watercolor. Uh, hopefully tonight, if, if we can, if we run out of time, there'll be a separate scope at a later date. Have I used non-photo blue pencil? Yes, I use it on a daily basis. Got mine right here. Ba-bam. Yeah, love the non-photo blue. That's where I do all most of my uh, uh, character, my my, uh, my sketching of of of, of uh, the panel, the panels and pages that I draw. I don't really use it for my com commissions because erasing that blue line can uh, be very very difficult. So uh, so when I when I pencil in blue line, I'm not looking to erase. So that's why I just do straight graphite for these types of illustrations. Did Spawn ever meet Wildguard? No, he he did not. He did not. Wildguard, uh, the only image books that Wildguard ever kind of interacted with would be uh, Jay Far Farber's uh, Noble Causes and Robert Kirkman's Invincible. We had some character cameos uh, between our three series. Was my Wild Guard character Scattermane inspired by Thundercats? Uh, yes, a little bit. Half Thundercats, half Masters of the Universe. And the other half is Flash. And yes, I know I just made that three halves. But three halves do make a whole, so, you know, it's super math. which is more than regular math. Which pencil do I prefer? I like a mechanical pencil, and I like a .3 lead, and I like my softness of lead to be an HB. I like, to, I, like, I like it right in the middle there. Not too hard, not too soft. Any advice on working in teams? Not quite sure what uh, if I understand what you mean by, by teams. I'm not sure what, what kind of work you do and what kind of teams you're working with. Howdy. Howdy to you, AJ. What would, what would be the best character to draw as a young artist learning to draw? You know, for me, I don't think that really matters. I don't think there's one best character. It's what do you want to draw? Where is your passion? Where is your excitement? Um... What do you want to draw the most? I need to see if she's wearing earrings here. Yeah, it looks like her ears are pierced. I'm using my iPad here for uh, photo reference. Not every shot is the perfect shot, so I have to scroll through and, and find the right shots. Some aren't at a good enough resolution to where I can really make out the details. If someone, the, the person who asked about the teams uh, posted a follow-up to their question, I'm sorry, I missed it there. I was looking on my iPad for for my Harley reference. How did I learn to draw? Um, I took classes, but I mean, it was also just kind of a, a, an innate ability in me as well. And do I sell my original art pages? Uh, many of them I do. Some pages I don't sell, but some I do. And usually you can... If you meet me at a convention, I always have some Spider-Man pages available. And if there's a specific page you're looking for, people are welcome to email me. And you can email me at the uh, email address that's listed on toddknock.com slash about, the about page of toddknock.com. I'll do my best to try to track it down if I can. What is my favorite page that I hold dearly, and can we see? Um, right now, all 12 issues of Nightcrawler, and I wouldn't be able to pull all those out right now. 
But hopefully you read Nightcrawler. Hopefully everyone read my Nightcrawler series. If you hadn't, it's available on trade paperback. Um, you can also read it on Comixology. So, um, so do make sure you read, read um, Nightcrawler. Any advice on how to work with a creative in a creative setting with a team to compromise with? With a team to compromise with. Um, again, I'm not sure if I completely understand your question, other than it sounds like you're looking for advice on working with a team in, in a creative environment. Um, yeah, you know, be a team player. Um, be willing to listen. You know, not every not every uh, team is going to have maybe have the, or not everyone on the team is going to have the same value as you. So uh, there will be give and take, and uh, yeah, hopefully it works out for you. I've had a good experiences in my in 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 the teams I've worked with in in comics. Um, my experiences have been far far more positive. I can't even think of really any negative experiences, um, just because we all have a passion for creating comic books. So um, so everyone was pretty much on the same page, and the writers I work with very open to my suggestions and. Um, you know, if I say, hey, well, what if I drew this or drew that for the story, you know, to help move things along. And pretty much every writer I've worked with where I've had a s suggestion of how to handle the art, uh, writers like uh, Phil Hester, um, Chris Claremont, uh, Peter David, Jay Torres, um, they've all been, and that's just a, a few of them, uh, have been very, very open to my input. So best of luck with you working with your creative team. Oh, you like the Star Wars versus the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, sketch I did. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very fun piece to do. Very time consuming. Took me a long time to draw all those Guardians of the Galaxy and then Stormtroopers everywhere. Was I ever hired as a colorist? No. No. I'm, I'm, I've am I'm. always been hired as a, um, as a penciler and now penciler inker. Always been uh, the... My, my passion has always been the line art. I enjoy doing colors for commission pieces like this, but uh, or pieces for fun or for my own personal projects, but uh, but never had the opportunity to really um, pursue colors for um, the comic books I work on because um, my focus is on the line art, and that's where I, I that's where my passion is. And I've worked with some amazing colorists, so I'd rather let them bring their magic. Why do I love to draw? I don't know. It's something that's always been with me. I think I just love putting lines down on paper and ha uh, something coming out of nothing. You know, we have a blank piece of paper. And someone had earlier to ask, what, what kind of paper is this? This is a Strathmore watercolor. Actually, no, Canson watercolor paper. What do I think of Ethan Castillo uh, at the cons? I think he's great. It's always a pleasure to see Ethan and his family at the cons. I saw Ethan at uh, most recently at uh, Emerald City Comic Con. So it's always great to see him and his dad and his uncle. All a very, very nice family. So if you ever get a chance to meet the Castillos, then, uh, then you're very fortunate. Oh, he's definitely good at his age. Definitely. What do you need to put in a portfolio? I get that question quite often, and it's a really great question for those looking to get into the comics. What you want in your portfolio is sequential art. You, and sequential art means panel-to-panel -panel storytelling pages. Um, and you don't need a lot. You just need maybe three to five really good pages, three to five of your best storytelling pages. I'll tell you why you only need three to five, is that Editors see a lot of artists and a lot of art during a convention, and they have a lot of other responsibilities as well. So they don't have time to look through a portfolio of 20 pieces of art, and they don't want to see stuff like this. If you just draw a cool shot of a character, you know, you can get a little bit of a critique, but what editors are looking to hire from are those that can tell stories visually. And so you've got to be able to show them you can do that. Um, if you want to get a job or to make an impression with an editor. So yeah, if you just have that stuff in your, in your portfolio, you know, three to five, uh, sequential pages of sequential art, and it's telling one story. It's just not five random pages, 
but it 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 it, it, it show the editor you can tell a story from page to page. So do a five page Spider Man story or a Batman story. What I suggest and what I did was I would draw either like Avengers or Justice League stories because then I'm drawing characters that hit a lot of different editors. So if I do a Justice League uh, five-page sequence for my portfolio, then I'm drawing something that not only works to show the Justice League editor, but the Batman editor, the Superman editor, the Green Lantern editor, the Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman editors. Same with Avengers. You're hitting Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Black Widow, Hawkeye. You're hitting all... Hulk, you know, you're hitting all the... You're hitting more editors... Uh, um, the characters they're responsible for. So you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're hopefully gonna appeal to more more editors in that way. And so, I mean, you can do a Captain America pa- page. You know, whatever you're most passionate about is very important because that's gonna come through. So, um, so that's my my advice on what to have in a portfolio. Because I've had people come and bring bring their portfolio, and they got twenty pinups in there, and it's like, well, it's it's great that you got 20 pinups in here, um, but I, I can't really like crit- you know, at best I can critique your your anatomy, but I can't critique your storytelling. An editor can't critique your storytelling, so it's kind of a you've kind of missed missed the mark for that that year's convention. So spend your time and do your best five pages, and don't bring a portfolio that has your old stuff in the back. Because if an editor gets to that stuff, and I've had people say, "Oh, yeah, that's my old stuff. It's not so good." It's like, well, what is it doing in here? That's not you're not advertising yourself in the best way. So don't leave the old stuff in the back. Take it out. Less can be more. Leave the editor wanting more. So hopefully that info helps you. I know it was a lot. What pencil am I using? Well, well, what I have been penciling, I've been using an Unikura Toga mechanical pencil. You can find it at jetpens.com. Oh, cool, cool. I'm glad that information helped y'all. Have I ever drawn Agent Venom? Yes, I drew Agent Venom in the... Uh issue of Guardians of the Galaxy that I helped out with uh, a couple of years ago. I think it was issue 14? Yeah. Do I like to read comic books? I've been reading comic books since I was 14 years old. 13 years old, actually. I was 13 when I started reading comics. So, yeah. I do enjoy reading the comic books. In fact, I look forward to hitting the comic shop tomorrow and picking up three weeks of uh, stash that's built up. How long are you glued to the desk when you're drawing a comic? Um, usually 8 to 12 hours a day, uh, about 6 days a week. How many drawings do I do a day? Um, usually I do about one page of comic book art per day, on average, roughly. Someone asked about if editors advertise their reviews. I didn't catch the whole thing. If you're asking about how to find out like where an editor will be uh, reviewing portfolios, uh, check with the publisher's uh, social media. Um, and uh, you can actually uh, sometimes ask the publisher if they're doing portfolio reviews through social media. And if so, where? And hopefully someone there will be able to give you an, give you an answer. So make sure you structure your, your request uh clearly and succinctly uh, so that uh, they can get you the exact information that you're looking for. You don't want to miss out an opportunity because of miscommunication. So be mindful of that. What does commission piece mean? That means uh, when someone, um, when a, uh, a client uh, well, uh, requests to purchase a, a specific illustration or to create an, an original illustration for them.
Does the page include inks or just the line art? Uh, for me, the line art is pencils and inks, yes. Now, some people think, uh, consider the term inks meaning to mean the colors. Uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's something different. Um, so this, this, like what I'm doing here, the, the, this is the inks. I, I drew in pencil and now I'm then, uh, enhancing my pencil lines with pen and ink. So, uh, so, so it, it is pencils and inks are what the line art is, is, is uh is what the liner is consisted of here in in my work. So I I do I do handle the inks in my line art. What comics am I reading right now? Um well, what am I reading right now? I'm behind in my reading. I'm like way behind. Um uh, but uh a lot of Marvel stuff. Some DC stuff. A little bit of image stuff. Have I ever met Stan Lee? Yes, I've met him a couple of times. Is it ever too late to get in the industry? Um, you know, I think everyone has a different uh, opinion on that question. Me? You know, it all depends on the artist. So, um, you know, it's I, I, I believe take a shot at your dream, but there's no guarantee that it will work out. So, so if you dream of being a comic book artist, you can take a shot at it and see if you can uh, break in. So, uh, but there's no guarantee that everyone will. In fact, it's, it is a guarantee that not that, you know, only, I'm sorry, I'm thinking too much while of what I'm trying to say here while I'm trying to handle the, the art here. So yeah, basically what I'm, I think I should just leave it at that. There's no guarantees, but take a shot because, you know. At least then you'll know. Do I ink all my work? Uh, pretty much now I do, yes. I love to do my own inks now. Been doing my own inks for about six years. What is the oldest age you can break into the business at? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if there is an oldest age. Um, it just really depends on the artwork that is being produced. So you could be a, a 60-year-old man who is able to bring something amazing to the comic scene and you could get hired. Now the likelihood of that might be fairly minimal, but uh, really it depends on where's your art at. What are you bringing to the table with your art? That's the main focus more so than age. I believe. Favorite Batman story? Uh, probably maybe Batman Year One. Um, Gotham by Gaslight is a good one. What are y'all's favorite Batman stories? Oh, and I like Tush too. I like Tush as well. Batman Begins, Hush, Long, Hall oh, Long Halloween, yeah, yeah. All Star Batman and Robin, right on. Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, That's great, great. Uh, Great Batman stories you are listing there. Very cool. Which one inspired me to start drawing? Um, I'm not sure if I know which with what the one is you're referring to. Which which one of what? If you don't mind me seeking a little clarification there. Do companies give you free copies of issues you do? Uh, many of them do, yes. Do I take breaks when I get stressed out? Um, I imagine I do. I probably, probably, I could probably say yes. Which comic inspired me? Um... 
you know, there wasn't one comic that inspired me. I think it was just comics in general. Just generalized comic books is what inspired me. Just I liked what, what, what could be done in, in those 20 to 22 plus pages. How do you work on your anatomy and facial features? Uh, try drawing from real life is probably the best place to start. And then practicing every day. It's not the, the, the funnest answer to receive, but practicing every day is what is critical. Um, and I'll kind of go into a little more explanation there of why I say practice every day is you gotta, you gotta develop the muscle memory. You've gotta put in the hours in, into practice, much like anyone who wants to play an instrument, like if someone wants to play a guitar, you know, they gotta, they gotta play till their fingers bleed, like Brian Adams said in the su uh, summer, su uh, the song Summer of 69, you know? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta practice, you gotta keep at it, you gotta, you gotta play all the bad notes so you can start to learn the good notes. You gotta draw all the ugly faces so you can learn from your mistakes and start drawing the more attractive or more proportionate or, or uh, more accurate faces. So um, that's why you gotta practice and you have to do it on a pretty much on a daily, if not regular basis. Um, or a regular, if not daily basis. Ideally, you wanna be doing it daily. Not everyone can draw daily. But you need to draw regularly if you can. And if you're serious about being a comic book artist, then yeah, you better start practicing to, uh, to draw daily because that's what I do every day is draw comics every day. So I have to be able to draw every day um, for multiple hours each day. That's why I'm so thankful that I love to draw because it makes doing my work a bit more easier to do because I, I, I love doing it. So, so practice, guys and gals, practice. What paper do I use for my comics? 11 by 17 smooth Strathmore Bristol board. You can get that at most any art supply store. So I hope that info kind of helps you in, in, in moving forward with drawing your faces. And it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to draw an ugly face because it's going to happen. Just keep going with it. Thanks for enjoying my Spider-Man work. Someone asked a question about uh, how to tell a, a, a good comic book story. Uh, what And what to put in all those boxes, uh, the, the panels. Um, you know, it's study comics. Study, study good comics uh your favorite stories and 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 notice how how the uh artists structured their pages what information did they put in their pages now mind you i this is the advice i'm giving cuz this was what i had to do as a kid growing up in the 1980s um i didn't have anyone to talk to i didn't have the internet we didn't have the internet back then so there was really no resource for me to get the information I wanted. Um, so I was just kind of pretty much all alone on my own in a little tiny East Texas town and uh, just kind of reverse engineering comics. So so I can only speak from my experience. And so that, that, that would be the answer that I, I would I would give is study your favorite, study your favorite artists and see how they do it and, and uh, start to notice any commonalities in, in their uh, pages. And then again, same with uh, same advice as I gave for drawing faces is the practice, practice, practice. Draw comic book pages. Draw, draw them as much as possible, um, because uh, you'll learn. You will learn more about what you're doing the more you do it. The trial and error. Again, I'm speaking from my own experience, because you can't break in and then start learning how to draw pages. That that that's. I think that would be an impossibility because, uh, or very, very unlikely, highly unlikely, because um, you got to be able to draw pages on a daily basis. 
And if you've never done it before and you're not conditioned to that kind of level of endurance, then, then you're not going to be able to, to keep up with your deadlines. It's like trying to run a marathon. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to run my first marathon. I'm severely overweight and, uh, I, ha I have bad knees and I, 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 um, I don't even have good running shoes. <laughs> the, if you, if you sign up for the marathon, you're probably not going to make all 26 miles. I know I couldn't make all 26 miles. I've never run a marathon, but drawing comics is a bit like a marathon. Cause you're drawing a lot, a lot of stuff on a daily basis to meet your deadlines. So you got to be prepared. You got to, you got to have the endurance. You find George Perez to be an excellent storyteller. I am right there with you. I love George Perez's work. I discovered him as a teenager in the 1980s on his new Teen Titans and Crisis on Infinite Earths uh, work and just was blown away by him. Why did I begin to stream when I draw? Uh, I'm not quite sure if I understand your question here. Are you referring to my Periscope broadcast? Why did I start to to broadcast my Periscope or uh, broadcast my illustrations on Periscope? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm having a difficulty understanding what you are meaning by your question, so feel free to elaborate if you can. Jeff Johns is a great writer, yep. So you get the story and then you draw the story? Pretty much, yes. That's correct. A writer will write the story, like Jeff Johns or Chris Claremont will write a story, and then as the artist, you've got to be able to interpret that story visually. You've got to figure out how to communicate all that information in those panels or those little boxes on the page. It's good to start learning the, the correct terms if you want to be in the industry, so panels is a, is a key one. Um, that refers to all the little boxes that are on a given page of comic book art. And, um, yeah, you got to figure out how to, um, you know, figure out what camera angles and how close up shots and, and long shots and, uh, um, medium sized shots, different camera angles, bird's eye view, worm's eye view, straight on view, um, and how to, how to, to, to switch from one to the other to, um, to create the most interesting or desirable visuals. What made me want to start broadcasting? Well, I have a YouTube channel, and I've been doing that channel for probably a few years now. And when I learned about Periscope, um, it was just an opportunity to, to draw live and interact with those who enjoy uh, comics and, uh, and my art as well. So... Um, so I thought it was a great resource to reach out to the uh, comic book fan community. When putting together a portfolio, original or mainstream, words or no words, um, you know, it all depends on you. you. You can have word balloons on your pages. You don't have to have word balloons on your pages. Um, but if you do, make sure it's the best lettering. It is the best uh, you don't, I would say avoid the word balloons because you don't want to end up getting a job as a letterer unless you have a passion for lettering, then make sure you have word balloons on there. But if you want to be a penciler, you don't want word balloons on your, on your pages because they might say, well, your penciling all is all right, but your lettering is fantastic. So they hire you to be a letterer and then you have it, they'll make it more difficult for you to switch over to penciling. You want to be, you don't want to get pigeonholed in a, in a, in a job that you don't like. Or it's not your passion. You might like lettering, but it, but you might like penciling more or inking more or writing more or coloring, you know. So, yeah. Uh, no, this is uh, the 08 Micron.
where did I get my start when I broke into the industry? When I broke in full time uh, and I was doing it as as a living, I got my start working for Rob Liefeld. I was found in his Extreme Studios talent search in the early days of Image Comics when he had left Image or left Marvel to start Image Comics with Jim Lee and Todd McFarlane and all those guys. So all those studios like Jim Lee's and Mark Silvestri were having talent searches and I entered all those talent searches and uh, it was Rob Liefeld that discovered me and, and hired me. And that's what brought me out to California to work in his studio. How do you plan storyboards? I'm not sure if I understand your question. Do I stay in touch with Rob Liefeld? Uh, yeah, yeah, Rob and I will, you know, we'll see each other uh, every now and again at conventions or events. We were both at the uh, the Avengers world premiere uh, of the movie, so we got a chance to say hi. He was there with his son or one of his one of his kids. So yeah, we see each other on occasion. I mean, we don't hang out all the time or anything like that, but uh, but we uh, but we do see each other on the con circuit mostly. So, oh, you're asking what storyboards are? Well, storyboards are more like um, those are different from comics. So that's like what a movie or a commercial or a TV show or an animated show is. Um, they're the, the, the illustrations that they do to, to plan out their shots for the, for the, um, for the film crew. So they do little sketches of, of what each shot will be with, with stage direction. So that's what storyboards are. I've never really done that. So if you're looking to get into storyboard art, I can't really advise on that. Comic books are a little bit like storyboards, but we have more freedom. We're not limited to the size of your screen. We can have long, skinny panels up, down. We can have angled panels. We can have circular panels. A lot more freedom there. Can I help you with your art files? Oh, I'm sorry. I wish I could, but uh, thanks for asking. Never hurts to ask. Unfortunately, I, I am not available uh, to help you with your art final. But I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best. Make sure I get my reference back up here to get Daddy's little monster t-shirt logo correct. Or as accurate as possible. It won't. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a fan of my art. Can you pay me to critique your art? Unfortunately, no. No, uh, that, that, I wouldn't be able to do that. But it never hurts to ask, and thank you for the for the offer. Sometimes I do art critiques at conventions if there's time. So if you're ever at a convention I'm at, feel free to stop by to ask. Not that I can promise that I will. I definitely can't promise that I will or can give a critique. But you can come and ask, and if there's time, and if it's possible, I'll see what I can do. But uh, but there's no guarantee. Which writer that you have not worked with yet are looking to work with in the future? Um, I think it'd be fun to work with Jerry Dugan. He and I have met on a number of occasions. We've chatted, but uh, we've not had a chance to work together. So that's a, a name coming off the top of my head. Or Sam Humphreys, another, another friend that I haven't had a chance to work with.
How would you set up a Periscope channel? Uh, download the Periscope app and they kind of walk you right through it. It's really easy to do. How would I describe my art style? Uh, traditional American comic book superhero art style. I guess would be a place to start. Any advice if you want to go into animation? No, I don't have any advice on that. I have not worked in animation, so I can't really uh, advise on that. But best of luck to you. What has been my favorite comic book to draw? Uh, oh, a lot of comic books I've worked on have been some of my favorites to draw, like uh, Young Justice, Nightcrawler, Spider-Man, Teen Titans, my creator-owned series, Wild Guard, uh, Invincible Universe for Robert Kirkman. I've gotten to draw a lot of fun comics. The books I did for Rob Liefeld, like Newman and Bad Rock, were a lot of fun. So those, those are some of the ones I've done. Have I have I uh, have you used a Cintiq? I have not used a Cintiq. I was actually at the Apple Store playing with the um, what's it called the um, iPad Pro, iPad Pro. So I'm starting to experiment with digital a little bit. Do I typically save the details in the face for last? Yeah, I actually I was really focused here on trying to get all these other details squared away. So I just, um, but yeah, I'll, I will be probably getting moving after I finish uh, her legs here with the stockings and, and some of the tattoos, which I might save the tattoos for um, the watercolor stage. Um, yeah, I'll head back up to finish the bat and to uh, finish the face. Do I ever do East Coast conventions? Yes, usually I'm at um, New York Comic Con in October. And I hope to be back this year. Do I ever do West Coast conventions? Yes, because I live on the West Coast, it's very easy for me to do West Coast conventions. So I'm usually at Long Beach Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, Sometimes WonderCon, um, Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle. No cons in Canada. I haven't uh, been able to make it up there um, in a while. But I'd love to come back. When coloring something that's white, what tone of grays do you use? Uh, depending on... Depending on the, the shade of white, I, I sculpt it with, uh, usually I sculpt it with cool grays. Very light cool grays, so like the cool zero to cool three. Do I have an art book available? I have two sketchbooks available, and you can find those for sale at toddknock.com. I'd love to come back to Salt Lake next year. I had a great time there last year. I really appreciated the invite, and I'd love for them to invite me back. Is it still a three-year wait for my commissions? Uh, three plus years, yes. Um, my work deadlines have been so busy, so hectic, that I have not been able to really focus on too many of my commissions. I've been able to get a couple of done here and there, but um, it's been a bit more slow going than than when um, than when my deadlines aren't so so hectic. So um, so yeah, so. Conventions are the best way to get a commission from me. 
How much did I love Civil War? I'd probably say uh, 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 very much. How do, how do you turn in a finished book for publishing? I upload the files to my publisher's uh, FTP server. Who's my favorite colorist to work with? Man, I got to work with some fantastic colorists. Uh, Gabe El Taib on Invincible Universe, Ra Rochelle uh, Rosenberg on, on Nightcrawler. Um, let's see, I've got to work with uh, um, Andy Troy has been doing some colors on some of my uh, variant covers along with Rochelle Rosenberg. Uh, Vero Gandini, she uh, color is coloring my um, Spider-Man and Silk series. Um, I've worked with uh, Andres Mosa. I've worked with um, Edgar Delgado on some smaller projects. Um, let's see, who else have I worked with? Um, yeah, those are some of the ones that I've worked with more recently. Oh, and John Rausch. John Rausch colored my um, uh, Guarding, Guarding the Globe series. I'm sorry, what's that, Don? Oh, and then, of course, yes, Hi-Fi. Thank you for reminding me, Don. Hi-Fi. Brian Miller of Hi-Fi uh, colored my Doctor Who covers, which turned out fantastic. So, um, um, so those are some, some of the colorists I've been working with in the past maybe five years, six years. Do I have any favorite jam pieces that I've done at conventions? Um, usually, uh, lately, the when I get invited to be a part of a jam piece... I'm drawing the Nightcrawler on someone's uh, jam piece, so those are the ones I'm I'm probably rem remembering mo more recently. Did one of those in uh, Chicago, but I don't often do a lot of jam pieces. Mo mo most of mine are individuals. What kind of music do you listen to while drawing, if any? Um, if I do listen to music, I like to listen to early '90s uh, alternative rock. Uh, 80s music. I'm a big fan of the 80s music because that's when I grew up. And um, if I want to listen to one specific artist, I like uh, the Hoodoo Gurus, the Connells, um, They Might Be Giants, R.E.M., and one that's usually on heavy rotation, the Aquabats. Alright, so let's uh, finish this bat. Oops, wrong pen. Need the zero 08 here. Got to make sure the top of this bat lines up with the previous portion of the bat that I inked. Want it to be straight all the way through. Oh yeah, the Hipster Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, I forgot. I started that. Um, I was the first one to to uh, contribute to that to that jam piece. That's right. So yes, I've forgotten about the Hipster. Guardians of the Galaxy. I drew Hipster Gamora. That was a lot of fun. Oh, uh, what? Uh, let's see. What I use after the eight, eight size eight micron is the zero one and the, the zero zero five. All right. Let's uh, let's push in here for the the face. Let's see. Oops. So I'm using the very thin markers here for the face. So the double zero five here initially, so I can get very thin detail lines. Have I ever drawn Mr. Freeze? Yes, I have. What killed the dinosaurs? 
Um, I don't know. I wasn't around back then. It wasn't me. Do not uh, try to frame me for that. I did not have anything to do with the dinosaurs becoming extinct. So I was not there. I was nowhere near the place. So you can't pin that one on me. Do I ever get tired of drawing a certain character? Um, not really. No. But it is fun when I work on a book with multiple characters, because then that gives me a lot of characters to interact with, and that's probably some of my favorite stuff. I've always enjoyed uh, team books. Like Young Justice, New Men. Even in Nightcrawler, we had a lot of the X-Men showing up, so that was fun, getting to draw Beast and Storm and Rachel Summers. Is there a way you can get an autograph from me? There certainly is. Um, if I'm in a convention in your area, come on by and I'd be happy to sign your comics. So personal appearances, public appearances are the, are the way to go. I have to finish her her pudden choker. What year do you think Harley Quinn looked best? Um, every year? One thing I love about Harley is that she has all these different looks from cartoon, comic, now movie. So, she's always got, a, there's always a different way to draw her. So, out, and, and they all have their own merits. What's your favorite? What year do you think she looked best? How long should it take you to complete a page? Um, I don't know if I can answer how long it, sh it should. Uh, just whatever it takes to get the book done in the, the con uh, constraints of the deadline. So... That could be anywhere from three to four weeks. So, um, so you, you 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 work your process how you need to 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 meet your deadline. So um, for me, I average um, a page a day, and that's pencils and inks. Have I done a tour setup on my channel? Um, I'm not sure if I know what you mean. I, need, I know what you mean by a tour setup, but um, so more than likely I probably haven't. Oh, it's just uh, just I was just reminded by my wife that uh, for the person that asked about getting an autograph. If you purchase one of my uh, sketchbooks from my uh, website, those all come autographed. No charge for those autographs. So, so if you're looking to get one of my autographs and you're not able to make it at a, to a con that I'm at, swing by toddknock.com and purchase, uh, purchase one of my art books. And I'll throw an autograph on there for you and, uh, and it'll ship right to your door. zoom back out here for a little bit. I forgot I was still zoomed in from when I went in to do the details of the face. There we go. Now 
little more depth here on the gun. All right, so um, give this all a moment to dry and uh, using my Statler Mars plastic eraser and taking out all those sketchy lines. So it's a good thing I did the pencil rough first because it's taken a full hour here just to do the inks. She's deceptively detailed in her design, which most of the movie versions are. They can afford to put in more details than we do in the comics because they don't have to draw it a bajillion times each issue. Back in the Young Justice days, we were creating a new character called Empress, and I came up with a design for her, and uh, my editor said, you know, Todd, you put a lot of details in here. He goes, you might want to think of streamlining her, because, you know, you're going to have to draw her over and over again. I thought, nah, no, we need all the details. Mm -hmm. And then, wouldn't you know, it's like, ah, he was right. This is, this is taking so much longer to draw because I put in so many details, but I thought, I thought it looked so cool. I was so young back then. Learn, learning as you go. But I love Empress, and I certainly didn't mind bringing the extra detail in the long run. But sometimes in the moment, it's like, oh, I wish I could go to bed, but I got to finish drawing each little bit of chain mail here on her, on her costume. Hello from Thailand. Hello, Thailand. Sawati. Hopefully I said that right. I know someone who lived in Thailand for a year. They taught me a little Thai. I used to be able to count in Thai, but I can't count in Thai anymore. Do I understand Thai? No, I, I, I don't understand Thai. Please don't uh, misunderstand. Uh, I was just taught to say, I think I was taught to say hello and how to count a little bit. So, uh, I've never been to Thailand. No, I have not. I've not had an opportunity to go there. But maybe someday. Do they have comic book conventions in Thailand? And oh, there we go. So, um, I'm sorry, I can't read that note on. Uh, <laughs> my wife is trying to communicate something to me, probably that it's getting close to dinner time. So, uh, since I'm not able to do the watercolors this time, I'll save uh, Harley Quinn here and, ooh, sorry about that. Uh, I'll save Harley Quinn here to do as a separate um, watercolor periscope sometime in the future. Don't know if it'll be my next periscope, but it'll be some, one some, somewhere down the line. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in, everybody, and thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks again for all the hearts, for all the supports, uh, supports, for all the support, for the subscribing to my Periscope, or if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you're watching here on Periscope for the first time, I have a YouTube channel. If you want to see more of my Periscopes or uh, my original YouTube videos, swing by YouTube.com slash Todd Knock. And, um, yeah, I hope you all have a great night, and hopefully we'll see you again real soon. Thanks a lot, everybody. Talk to you soon.